So the Lydium of Christian Life was one of Peru's most influential Roman Catholic groups. Formed more than 40 years ago, the secretive organization recruited wealthy young men and women and opened chapters across Latin America, reaching the United States and Europe. Now Peru's authorities are investigating allegations that its founder sexually and physically abused children for decades. From Lima, correspondent Dan Collins brings us a story of yet another case of sex abuse in the Catholic Church. They consider themselves half monks, half soldiers. Recruited from Peru's European descended elite, they thought they'd be serving God's will. Instead, they found themselves serving a different master, says former member Pedro Salinas. Estamos hablando de un movimiento que tiene una estructura jerárquica, vertical, muy autoritaria, absolutamente totalitaria que le permite eh, tener todo el poder a una sola persona. Y ese, eh, esa persona ha quedado demostrado en la investigación, abusa del poder absoluto que tiene y ello deriva en maltratos psicológicos, maltratos físicos, coerción psicológica, violación de la correspondencia, violación a los derechos humanos, tratos vejatorios y en los casos extremos, eh, abusos sexuales a menores. That person was Sodalicium's founder, Luis Figari, accused of rape and molestation by three unidentified former members of the secretive group. Half monks, half soldiers is the title of the book written by Salinas and Paula Ugas, which pulls together 30 interviews from former recruits. The allegations of sexual and other abuses are part of a criminal lawsuit in Peru. But Figari is in Rome, protected by the sect he founded. But the allegations against him have obliged him to hire one of Lima's most expensive defense lawyers. He is in a retiro forzoso, obligado, y con el cual, y en el cual él está en oración permanente y en una meditación sobre sobre lo que ha sido su vida. He says Fagari admits there were physical excesses, but denies sexual abuse. The Catholic Church in Peru and its most senior representative, the Archbishop of Lima, Cardinal Luis Cipriani, have called on Figari to return and face the allegations. Los abusos sexuales son materia grave, especialmente en el caso de los niños, siempre. Y la Iglesia no puede Nunca, por ningún caso, encubrirlos. But no action was taken when three men lodged complaints with a Peruvian church tribunal in 2011, alleging Figari had sexually abused them when they were minors. CCTV's request for an interview with Sodilicium of Christian Life's current leader, Alessandro Moroni, went unanswered. But many former members of the organization are now speaking out. Oscar Osterling says he wasn't sexually abused, but bears the psychological scars of 20 years inside Sodalicium. Now aged more than 40, he's trying to begin a normal life, but is racked by doubts. Para quien no es católico, es muy sencillo. Es decir, oye, si tú tienes una institución hecha a imagen y semejanza de su fundador, es sencillo. Si yo suspen, si el fundador era un depredador sexual, bueno, no puede haber institución. Este, yo como católico lo que sigo creyendo es que es el Espíritu Santo, digamos, que independientemente de, del fundador o de que esa persona haya traicionado eh, lo que fue inspirado, este, puede seguir existiendo. That faith runs deep in Peru. More than 85% of Peruvians call themselves Roman Catholic. 
few thought to question a Vatican-recognized lay organization, especially when the leaders had their photo taken with Pope John Paul II. Think, uh, Yet more, like Osterling, are starting to open up about their experiences. I was not physically abused, I was not sexually abused, but I was uh, psychologically um, mistreated. You know, we, we, I heard and we heard, the 24 of us, heard lots of uh, insults about our fathers, our families, even about our, ourselves, that we couldn't be good people anyway unless we change, and they didn't like us. So I got away, I escaped from it. I thought for five years that I was a traitor, and, um, and, and I started to, to, to hear testimonies from people who were really, really, really uh, very badly abused. So I started to think. Karnob went on to become a psychologist and an expert on sects. He learned that while the ideology may differ, they all work in virtually the same way. He believes Vigari, like so many so-called charismatic leaders, is a psychopath. It's a, a pathological leader. That's a leader that has his personality uh, built around a psychopathic personality. The psychopath is a person who doesn't care about the other. We have different levels of psychopaths. There are serial killers and we also have mass, massive movement leaders. So these are the ones most evolved, most complex, most dangerous. But it's not just the founder, but also his second in command, who is accused of using his power to rape and sexually abuse minors. Herman Doig, who died in 2001, was a candidate for sainthood until the allegations emerged and the campaign to see him beatified petered out. But shut off from the outside world in places like this and protected by some of Peru's wealthiest and most powerful families, it took years for the truth to come out. This is one of several houses where Luis Figari, the founder of Sodalicium, lived until he fled to Rome in 2014. It's up for sale now, but there are still signs of the old order, an order under which dozens of devout young men were forced to live in complete obedience to his every whim and desire. Below this symbol of a flaming sword, it reads in Latin, the Lord has chosen nine battles. Many former members may not remember what those battles were or exactly how they were supposed to be fighting them. More than fighting the good fight, members recall they were forced to wait hand and foot on the founder as he watched television late into the night. Si es una persona, digamos, inspirada por el Espíritu Santo, ¿no es cierto? Y que tienes además una cúpula que lo secunda en lo que él dice, él era capaz de supuestamente mirarte el alma a través de la mirada. Entonces, y todo el mundo le creía. Él te decía lo que tú estabas pensando. Y tú te creías, tú que estabas afuera viendo esa escena, creías de verdad que él sabía lo que estaba pensando la otra persona. Entonces, eh, y como tienes autoridad y como no cuestionas, y si cuestionas eres un desobediente, y si cuestionas eh, eres un disidente, ¿no es cierto? Este, nada, le, le, tienes que, le tienes que hacer caso. This kind of pseudo-religious conditioning took place in many of the top schools across Peru. So Delicium recruiters preyed on troubled, often rebellious teenagers, as Pedro Salinas recalls. Personalmente estaba atravesando por una situación eh, complicada en mi casa, mis padres estaban eh, separando, yo tenía problemas de conducta en el colegio, eh, me estaban expulsando del colegio y de pronto aparecieron estas personas como mis rescatistas o mis salvadores, ¿no? Eh, y el método de, de captación es muy parecido al de cualquier secta. Gradualmente te van separando de tu familia, luego te van separando de tus amigos, luego van eh, pulverizando y anulando eh, y aniquilando la figura paterna, que luego es reemplazada por diversas figuras paternas que existen en la organización. Hay un momento 
pasados varios años, que cuando miras hacia atrás, atrás ya no hay nada. Miras a tu costado y solamente ves sodálites, que son tu nueva familia. Y en ese momento es cuando te piden un mayor grado de compromiso y es el que dejes todo para entrar a vivir en las comunidades. They were brainwashed, says Salinas, repeating phrases like he who obeys is never wrong or the independent spirit is death for the community. Figari used a series of tricks to bend the recruits to his will, like exploring energy points in the body or supposedly helping them to relax through yoga. Well, we Jose Ugas, a leading Peruvian lawyer representing the victims, says this was how the recruits became virtual slaves. What is a common situation of all the victims is that they lost their liberty, their freedom. And this freedom was taken by these people who conditioned their lives into a mental prison. I mean, they were living in homes that they controlled and all of the victims say that they felt in the impossibility of living there because their, their mental situation was, ha, had been conditioned in such a way that they, they didn't feel free to leave. What's now being investigated is precisely Sodalicium's relationship with power and money. Exempt from taxes as a religious organization, Sodalicium amassed considerable assets, including properties, cemeteries, schools, and even universities. How it came by those considerable resources is just beginning to come to light. Journalists continue to investigate Sotolidium just as the legal case begins against its founder and other members. But with Peru's legal system, no one expects the process to be swift.